Hello and guten Tag to War Thunder with Deutsch Stahlhagel. Today I want to do a review of the Panther Mark D or Ausführung D tank. And to begin with this review, let's look at the stats card. Well, it's a rank 3 tank with a battle rating of 6, which means the main opponents will be the T44, the T3485, the IS-1 and the IS-2. Um, it weighs around about uh, 45 tons and has a 650 horsepower engine which leads up to uh, 55 ki kilometers an hour um, top speed. Um, the gun depression of this tank is kind of okay, or it's comparison to the Russian tanks, it's very good. It has a gun depression of minus 8 degrees, which means you can fight um, out of a hull down position very well. Um, other than that, the turret rotation time of this tank is very poor. It only has 6 degrees a second turret rotation time, which means it's even worse than the Tiger and it's nearly um, double as slow as the T-3485 which one has I think around about 12 degrees a sec. Um, let's look at the armor of this tank. On the upper plate you have 80 millimeters and on the lower plate you have around about 60 millimeters of armor which give this tank an effective armor of round about 120 to 130 millimeters of protection because these plates are quite well angled. Other than that, the side armor of this tank is very poor. It only has 40 to 45 millimeters and in the back even 40 again. This means this tank could very well could very well be killed by even reserve tanks like the T26 but in fact you will never face them or kill them before they can reach you. So that's only a, a theoretical. Um, this tank couldn't be angled um, as the Tiger, so if you over-angle this tank, your weak side armor will give the enemy an easy shot and um, they will kill you when you over-angle your tank. So the best angle for this tank would be round about this, kind of round about uh, 10 degrees. Another weak spot of this tank is the fairly poor turret armor. It only has 100 to 110 millimeters of armor protection, which means the T-34 or the 85 millimeter guns of the enemy will be easily able to um, penetrate your turret if they get close enough. Um, the inner modules of this tank, um, it's kind of the Tiger, for example. If you can hit a panther from the side, always aim for the upper hole. Um, you can blow up the ammunition with the first shot and the panther is history. If you have a shot at the front of a panther tank, always aim for the left side of the tank or the right side of your side. Um, this will give you a chance of killing one, two or even three, four crew members with one shot and um, killing the tank instantly. If you can um, penetrate the lower lower um, front glasses, um, you can very well be able to um, destroy the gear of this tank and uh, making it um, yeah, stationary so it can't move anymore. Um, let's talk about the gun a little bit more. The gun was, in, I think, one of the best guns in the Second World War. In this game, the armor, pen armor penetration of this gun is very well um, I be able to um, penetrate an IS-2 or an IS-1, even at great distances. And it has one of the best penetration values at this battle ranking. Um, otherwise, it a little bit lacks the punch of the 80mm gun uh, of the Tiger. So sometimes you even have to take two or three shots at an enemy to kill it with um, your gun. So that's enough for the theory. Let's see how this tank um, does on the battlefield. Okay, um, we are here at the Cursed map. Um, 
the cursed map I would say is the ideal map for the panther tank. Here you can play the panther to its strength. Um, it's a sniping tank and uh, here you have a wide area where you can use the gun very well by sniping. Um, it has a very high penetration, high velocity gun, so the vertical lead is not that bad and the armor penetration on great distances is even not as bad. For example, um, the armor penetration up to 1000 meters is still 120 millimeters of armor. So that's very good and very ideal for this map for sniping. As you can already see here, um, the tank is not the fastest in the world, but it's not the slowest either. Uh, for example, it's not a light tank. It's a, it's a very heavy tank for a medium tank, it's way, it weighs 45 um, tons, but it has kind of a very um, yeah, accurate, I would say, uh, engine for its weight. And um, yeah, the acceleration of this tank is quite okay. And down a slope, like here, it can reach a top speed um, very easily. And uh, the only problem that Tiger and the Panther have is um, going up a slope. As I said before, the tank is very heavy for a medium tank and up a slope it will not do very good. Um, if you play this tank on even ground or a down slope, um, you will feel like uh, driving a Ferrari like here. Um, I'm going up uh, 55, yo, 55 kilometers an hour and nearly jumped here a little bit. But um, now I'm trying to go up a hill and um, there you can see um, after this turn, this tank has some problems with um, accelerating on a slope and yeah, always try to avoid going up very very steep slopes and stay on nearly even ground um, or only climb up slopes if you are sure there's nobody around you that could possibly kill you. Um, when you're up uh, on the slope, um, you're kind of the king of the battlefield. You can snipe around you and snipe on great distances or on um, very very far distances and um, I think only the IS-2 with this very hard punching 122mm gun can fight you fr from the distance and kill you from the distance. So um, if you are able to, yeah, to, to cover or to get an, a very good strategic point then, then capture it and stay there and snipe um, over the battlefield. As you can see here um, three of the Panther tanks um, from our team managed to get up the plateau here, up the hill here. The enemy team made a bit, big mistake. They did not cover this um, plateau or this hill and uh, made it very easy for us to capture it and hold this very very good strategic point. Um, a panther uh, in this position is um, capable of nearly destroying all that it encounters. Um, from here you can shoot at great distance or at far distance like I do here and um, at this distance, round about a thousand meters or a thousand two hundred meters, you can very well penetrate an IS-1 or an IS-2 on the turret, and you can penetrate a T-3485 as well uh, on the whole and on the turret. And here you can see the full potential of this tank. I'm not really um, going any further up the slope or up the hill. I just stay here, mark my targets and then look at the map, calculate round about the distance and then fire at the enemy and with this very accurate gun and the very um, good penetration value of this, of this gun it's quite easy to, um, to get some effective fire on the enemy. Like you can see here, it was kind of a lucky shot but at least it hit the target, it penetrated and it killed it. So that's my advice to you always, if you are able to, always stay on distance and uh, fight the enemy on very far distance. The Russian guns, especially the 85mm, loses a lot of power on uh, the travel or on the way to its target and um, the 75mm high velocity gun of the Panther um, does not. So you have quite a big punch on even a great distance. Um, now you can say, oh I'm not good at fighting on distance. I cannot really calculate well um, the distance and um, how to aim. Um, there's a 
there's kind of a, um, a good way to calculate the distance. If you can see the, the map, and the map has kind of a grid on it, and uh, every grid or every quarter of this grid, every side of it is round about a 400 meters. So if the target, um, like the heavy tank in front of me, is two clicks or two grids away, it means that it's round about 800 meters uh, away from me. So calculate it, sum it up, and then try to um, focus with your sight um, at the 800 or at the 8 mark and then fire at your enemy and um, yeah maybe it hits on the first shot like here and then you have to readjust a little bit a little bit higher a little bit tomatoes left to the right or a little bit lower like you can see here I adjust a little bit to the left and it hit kind of optimal now I adjust a little bit higher and it hit the target very well. This shot uh, set him on fire and that's what killed him. Um, the other guy, the eyes one there, I did not readjust my aim because it was kind of the same distance and um, yeah, the shot hit the target. Then I spotted the T-34-85 making a run. Um, at the same distance I just gave it a, gave a little bit lead and then hit a little bit too high but um, it did some damage anyway and um, that's what you want to do. Um, I then readjusted to the other guy. Unfortunately I hit um, I had hit the upper glasses, the 120 millimeter glasses and uh, it did not work out that well as I was thinking. But um, he was then hiding behind a wreck I guess. I tried to hit him from this position but um, I was then aware that I will not be able to hit him from here. I had to readjust a little bit or re, uh, relocate a little bit uh, so I can have a little bit more of, uh, of his sight. And that's what we have here. Um, what else can you say about this tank? Um, I have some kind of some marks. Um, you are able to uh, to kill um, an IS-1 or an IS-2 in the turret up to 1800 meters. The penetration value of the 75mm gun is still more than capable of penetrating the armor of these turrets, uh, of these tanks. So um, the IS-2 will be able to kill you from this distance, but the IS-1 will not. So if you're facing an IS-1, always keep him on great distance or in far distance. You will be able to um, outclass him um, in every way on this distance. Um, another good thing to know is over a thousand meters the panther is kind of immune to the 85 millimeter shells of um, the T-34-85 or the IS-1. Even the composite rigid rounds of the 85 millimeter from T-34-85 um, cannot penetrate you over a thousand meters because um, the penetration values are not high enough. Um, other than that um, over a thousand meters, a T-44 and the Panther tank can kill each other. So um, over this distance it's useless to engage a T-44 and the T-44 who engages you um, can kill you if you're facing the front to him. Um, other than that, if you are facing a T-44 or a T-44 is facing you and the Panther, you could penetrate each other up to a distance of 1000 meters. A thousand meter and below a T-44 and the Panther can kill each other. The T-44 can kill you while hitting you in the turret and you can kill him while, hit, uh, while hitting him in the turret too. So um, that's a good thing to know, I would guess. And the last but not least, the Panther tank was designed to fight the T-34 and due to that the Panther can kill a T-34-85 um, up to a distance over 2000 meters. So if you're facing a T-34 and he's stationary and you are able to fight him over distance like over 2000 meters or up to 2000 meters, you can very well kill him while hitting him in the hole or even in the turret. It should be no problem for this gun. So always use the distance. 
And again, if you are saying, well, I'm not that good at fighting on distance, then go to the test ground, pick a nice point where you have a good overview, and then aim carefully, always remember, um, calculate um, the shots due to the, uh, or referring to the grids on the map, sum it up, and then adjust your aim and fire. And I can guarantee you, you will get um, good at this uh, very, in a very short time. Uh, I did it that way too, and nowadays it works very fine. Um, the match is pretty much over right now, and uh, as you can see, the whole fighting went on on far distances. I did not encounter any of the tanks at close or medium range, and still was able to kill at least, I guess, four or five of them um, with this very good and accurate gun. On uh, small maps like uh, the Cuban or Ash River, the Panther tank um, excels not like here on the big maps like Kursk or Mostok. On the small maps, uh, it's an advantage to have a rather tiny or rather um, more agile tank like a T-34-85, um, because the firepower or the penetration values of the guns on these small maps are not that important, because the maps are always small, the distances are never really big or never far, so the Panther cannot really excel on these maps. Um, nevertheless, it's still a good tank with some very good armament and uh, very good armor on the whole, and um, yeah, the T-3485 will still have problems to penetrate you if they are not aiming for the turret. And another tip from me is, if you are in trouble, like two IS-2 engage, engaging you around the corner or in the city and you have the opportunity to turn around and move away then do it because this tank is really slow in moving backwards and always keep that in mind if you are trying to fight from a strategic position um, don't go too far over the hill or over a hold down position because if an immediate uh, threat is coming up you won't be able to retreat as fast as in the IS-1, for example, or in the T-34. This tank is really, really slow in the backwards movement. I only can recommend you to try it out on a testing ground, and there you will see that's really, really um, bad quality of this machine. Nevertheless, I would say this machine is um, superior to the IS-1 and the T-34-85. Um, it has the better armor layout and, of course, the better armor mend. Um, the only real threat on the battlefield should be the IS-2 with his big punchy gun and the T-44 with a strong frontal armor. It, but if you play this tank to its strengths while um, keeping them on distance, you won't have that much trouble um, as you might think. I hope this clip was fun and informational at the same time. I hope to see you again and always remember, do the best on the battlefield. Bye!